In this video, I'm going to talk to you about electronegativity as we continue our discussion of periodic trends. Now, electronegativity is defined as the relative ability of an atom to attract shared electrons to itself. And it is abbreviated with a capital E-N. In class, you should have received what's called the Pauling Scale of Electronegativities. Now, the Pauling Scale of Electronegativities is a scale that was created by chemist Linus Pauling from his studies of gaseous atoms and bond energy. Now, it is a relative scale, and it is dimensionless because it is based on qualitative properties. Direct your attention over to fluorine here. Its electronegativity value is a 4.0. And relative to other elements, it has the highest value, which means it has the greatest ability to attract electrons to itself based on this definition. I want to distinguish between two terms that are often used interchangeably. That would be electronegativity and electron affinity. Electron affinity is a measurement of the energy change that occurs. And so this will be a topic we'll discuss several units from now, but I wanted to be sure to distinguish between these two because they're often used interchangeably when in fact there is a difference between them. The electronegativity will increase as you move across a period and up a group. So that is the periodic trend that is the topic of this video, increasing electronegativities from left to right and from the bottom of a group or family to the top. Atoms with relatively high electronegativity, like fluorine, are able to pull in their bonded electrons closer to their nucleus, closer to those protons when compared to atoms that have lower electronegativities. So you probably are seeing here there's a relationship between the electronegativities and the topic of the last video on atomic radii. Smaller atoms are going to have higher electronegativity values. This should make sense. Their nuclei with the protons are closer to the bonded electrons than nuclei of larger atoms. Larger atoms are going to have lower electronegativity values. Now, you've heard me throw out the term Coulombic attraction. It's time to get a definition. Coulomb's law is a, a mathematical description that was discovered by a French physicist, Charles Augustin de Coulomb. And he found this mathematical relationship, which comes up over and over again in science. And that is the inverse squared relationship. So we're making such a big deal out of distance. And in this, rela in this equation, distance, is the R. But notice that it is not only inversely related to F sub E, which is the electrostatic force, but notice that it is squared. And we term that the inverse squared relationship. So let me put this into words. The force, the electrostatic force, the attraction or repulsion is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Here's an example. I have an electron and I have the nucleus. Now, scenario two, they are twice as far apart. So distance has doubled, but distance is also squared and in the denominator. So if distance doubles, then we would expect the attractive force to go down and indeed it does, it is quartered. And that's that relationship. The Q1 and the Q2 are referring to the magnitude of the charges between, in this case, the subatomic particles, 
We'll talk about Coulombs more later. Let's move on and continue talking electronegativity. So, noble gases, there's no value on this scale. Well, Linus Pauling didn't forget about them. It, it's simply that noble gases already have a complete outer valence shell. Let's look at some Bohr models that show this. From helium all the way down to xenon, we see that all noble gases have a complete outer valence shell and are therefore, for the most part, unreactive. Transition metals, on the other hand, exhibit little variance among them. This is due to the complex metallic bonding properties, electron-electron repulsion, electron shielding, and some of the other phenomena that occur within the D block. They will be the topic of discussion in a later podcast. So in this video, we've continued our discussion of periodic trends by now talking about electronegativities. I'll see you guys in class.